WWE extremely boring pay-per-view because not only did we not have an Intercontinental Championship defense, not only did we only have one stipulation, but in a pay-per-view where anything goes, you had a DQ finish. Whoa. But I cannot review this pay-per-view alone. So for, I believe, the second time on the No Hold Bar Network, please welcome my wrestling partner in crime. What's up, Skylar? Hello, everyone. Glad I'm back. I've been waiting. <laughs> hey, I mean, you know, I had a rough summer. No, summer I Slam know. was on. Uh, so it's a deserved break. Yes, yeah, a very deserved two month break, but we're here. And I feel bad because I'm bringing you on to review a really bad pay per view. I know. I know. It, it's bound to happen with WWE. It's okay. Don't worry. Full gear, I, I got you. Like when we review full gear, we're going to have a good time. We have to see. Because I'll be at Kevin's. Mm, I'll be in a hotel with AEW superstars the next day. Yeah, I'm going back to Albany the next day. You'll be with Tony Schiavone. I'll be with Kenny. We're going to have a fun time, guys. But we're sadly not talking about that company. So let's start with the pre-show. So a couple things happened on the pre-show. Um, we had a match moved from the main show to the pre-show, and we had introduced a six-man tag team match that was going to open up Extreme Rules between AJ Styles, Omos, and Bobby Lashley taking on the New Day. So how this match kind of came about was AJ and Omos were like, oh, who cares about Big E? Like, who cares about the New Day? They're not important. And the New Day are like, well, we think we're important. They had this whole brawl. So six-man tag to open up the show. What did you think about this match being added to the main card? I didn't see a point. I think that's a Monday Night Raw or SmackDown kind of match, not a pay-per-view match, because I feel like pay-per-view should have all, all the titles defended or just, I think the Liv and Carmella one should have been, because that's more of a storyline than what's been happening in a way. Like, I don't know. It's just, it was boring. It didn't, it shouldn't have opened up the match. It shouldn't have happened at all. It should have been at least Big E defending, you know? Like, I get what they want to do, get Raw views up for tomorrow, but I mean, the other thing is, too, is the draft is on Friday. Yeah. Exactly. So, thank God. <laughs> thank God. It's going to change nothing. <laughs> it's hey. going to change nothing. <laughs> hey, maybe it will. Maybe we'll have Monday Night Rollins again. We're all going to be, I mean, it's not going to happen, but, you know, maybe, maybe some things are going to happen. But you mentioned it, Liv Morgan and Carmella open up the show with Liv getting the huge win. Thank God. This match was fun. I didn't expect much from this because even though this match did have a story, it was kind of put together. And especially since Liv lost on Friday. Yeah. To Zelina was a little shocking to me. But this match was fun. And just to see how over Liv is with the crowd is ultimately insane. That if WWE does not do anything with her, like, what are you doing? <laughs> and I know that there was a Queen of the Ring rumored I don't know if we're still going forward with this because I know that the finals are supposed were supposed to be taking place at the Saudi show, which is October 21st. So if that's the case, she needs to be the winner of the tournament. Yes. Please. Or after this, you know, Sasha, Becky, Bianca thing, TLC have lived challenge for the title. I agree. Um, yes, this match was really, really well. I like that it was actually a nice back and forth. And it was actually very entertaining, which has been very different from what Carmella has been usually wrestling since she came back. I, I love that the crowd was just so over for a live. And I, I guess I agree. I hope Vince and backstage listen, but we know what happens when wrestlers get their own, uh, their own push, their own like, yay, without WWE's help. So, but, you know, I think Liv deserves, if they do the Queen of the Ring, definitely deserves it. She deserves so much. She's worked her ass off. She's the last Riot Squad member to be left in WWE. Um, she's improved so much. Like, her finisher is one of my favorite because that's, like, sick, you know? So, yeah, she deserves everything. She deserves to be champion at some point in her career. It's like I said on the BCP, I don't know if maybe it was this this prediction panel or maybe one of the ones before for SummerSlam. There's a reason Vince did not fire Liv. Yeah. And there's a reason, like, she, he sees something in her. 
if you even watched the Liv Morgan documentary, the fact that when he pulled Liv's match was because he wanted the crowd just to have a bigger reaction to seeing Liv again. Yeah. So Vince sees something in her. But I don't want them to pull the trigger too late because that's another thing that WWE is very used to is pulling the trigger too late on a lot of stars. Yes. So Vince, don't hold out. <laughs> Please. This is the perfect time to do it. Perfect time after the whole. Hi, car. This happened last night too. My quiet neighborhood just wants to be loud. Um, but you know, I, I, I think definitely is a perfect time to like make her champion or start pushing her to be, keep letting her get wins. Make her verse the bigger, like the more threats in her life instead of just Alina and Carmella. I think a raw switch would help yeah. i think debuting more stars on smackdown instead of using the same five people you do every week would also be a big help in that yes. the draft is going to hopefully fix a lot of problems i have very high hopes for this draft but i know that after next monday i'm literally going to be like oh this draft did nothing yeah well that's the thing like because like with the they have women on smackdown they have shotzi and and uh knox that they're calling her now like yes they deserve that tag team championship before Rhea and Nikki oh we know but they won't use them and anyway <laughs> from one tag team to the next let's talk about the New Day AJ Almas and Bobby Lashley this match to me was very slow I agree and I don't know why it was very slow I feel like they just didn't mesh well and I I don't want to blame a specific person but I think the thing that we need to talk about is the bilingual pay-per-view we had because we're learning all types of languages at Extreme Worlds we're learning English we're learning Spanish we're learning French Peacock get your stuff together it's the ultimate heel Peacock is the heel of the whole life <laughs> and I didn't even hear the French part because I was in a meeting from like eight o'clock to eight forty-five. So my whole phone is blowing up. Like, oh my god, did you hear it's French? And I'm like, no, I don't hear it. I hear the Spanish people. Yeah. When 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 the language gets mixed up, and I hear English and French, it just sounds like Spanish to me. <laughs> Especially because I didn't realize this that the Spanish commentators translate the promos yeah. because when Carmella was cutting her promo the Spanish companies were literally transcribing Carmella's entire promo in Spanish yeah. and I go oh I didn't know you guys did that that's a that's a hell of a job you guys, you guys do I commend you a lot more now than just us putting people through your tables <laughs> yeah no that um I definitely didn't know that either because it's very interesting I mean it makes sense when you're live you can't have like a someone just voice over them until like posts you know did you like the six man no <laughs> I, um, I, it just didn't have any charisma like I love biggie I love the new day but it just felt lacking of charisma you know how everyone knows how I feel about Bobby <laughs> bye <laughs> and AJ and Oma is usually a pretty good in the ring and it just it felt very lackluster today I don't know. I mean, I can't even blame the fact of the European tour because none of them were on the European no, tour. That was all raw. All, all SmackDown was in Europe. Can't even blame the fact they went from Europe to SmackDown to the Bay Review. Yeah, because actually the SmackDown side actually pulled through. Well, Blue, we love you guys. Woo! Speaking of blue, let's talk about the Street Profits and the Usos for picking up the pay-per-view. Did you like this match? Yes. Um, beginning was a little slow, but once the crowd started getting into it, like, I just was like, oh my god, I'm going to get into this now. Like, the crowd was actually pretty good tonight. <laughs> so Thank you, Ohio. At first, yeah, at first, I thought Vince was putting in, like, the, the sounds again until they started saying stuff they wouldn't put in. And I was like, okay. But like the kicks, out, like the amount of kick, kick outs was perfect. The time uh, limit was perfect. Like it was, I, I think they're a great matchup together. 
I don't think the Street Profits can necessarily have a bad match. I think they're that good. I know a lot of people after what happened on Friday were like, oh, Montez and Angela are going to split up. I don't think you can do that just because Angela would very much get lost in the shuffle and he would just be put in another tag team, just like they're trying to do with Cesaro right now, who's also MIA. Like, where the hell has this dude been? He beat my boy at Mania and now he's gone. They gave us what we wanted and they were like, here, have a cookie. No more. Bye. Unbelievable. But this match was good. I mean, I knew, like, the Usos, it was obviously we're going to win because the bloodline is literally the hottest thing on WWE right now. And the same thing, like, how obvious it was Reigns that was going to win and we'll get there. But this match was fun. I think that these two teams definitely need to be on different brands because we've seen this match so many times. And I've said this on the BCP that they need to revamp the tag team division. That needs to be their main focus with this draft is revamping the tag team division on both the men and the women's side because you don't have tag teams. No. Every single woman's tag team is two singles competitors that you put together. Mm-hmm. And you only have two or three tag teams on each brand. And it's a problem. You it can't have a tag team division with five teams so you need to either call up teams from nxt or you need to figure something out because you need to fix this if you're not going to fix this take what i've said since the beginning of 2020 and make just one raw smackdown tag team titles make one title that you can do with the women's like you do with the women's because this is ridiculous and i don't want to rant every single thing that we do Oh, by the way, guys, um, Intercontinental Championship, last time it was defended, WrestleMania. I'm just saying. I- yeah, I agree with the tag team division, though. Like, it's just, like, you have people in NXT who, who are tag teams, and then you split them up before they go on the main roster and just put them with other single competitors. Like, if we get Casey and... Um... Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, her name's slipping right now, and I feel so bad. Uh, uh, Kaden? Yeah, Kaden Carter. Kaden Carter. If you keep them, because they are amazing together, they can actually elevate the tag team division. You know, like just keep them together before they're called up. I wouldn't mind, actually. I don't think they're going to do this. I wouldn't mind if Friday you called up Don and Holland from NXT. If you called up Pete Dunn and Rich Holland. Oh, I heard Don and Holland. <laughs> it's like, it's Don and Holland. <laughs> They're the new people I can't keep up with on NXT. Oh, I can't keep up with them either. The NXT review, I was like, Kyle, I don't, I don't know anyone. Don't, don't yell at me. <laughs> no, but I really wouldn't mind if you called up Pete and uh, Ridge. My problem with that is because I love Pete as a single competitor. And if they be- break up, Ridge is going to just not kill him because he's going to kill him because he's a big man. You know, I don't want Pete getting lost in the shuffle. He's already lost in the shuffle. That's why he hasn't won the NXT title yet. The man has been. He's not lost. Don't say that. It's okay. I had this conversation with Kyle this morning. Seth is also lost in the shuffle. (laughs) Seth Rollins. We're getting a third edge match. It was okay with two. Not even. Third match is going to be the best one. You know why? Because Seth is going to win two in a row. He's going to lose. He's trying too hard. No, if we get a Beth versus uh, Beth and uh, Edge versus Becky and Seth, I'm good. I want that. I want that. No. How iconic that would be? No. You don't see vision. (laughs) I know. My vision is the fact that Alexa Bliss should have... You know what my vision is? You see this person on my shirt? (laughs) She should have won the damn title. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna say something You're right now. You're not allowed to complain because no. no, she wasn't. No, no, I'm gonna complain because I lost my predictions battle with Mike over this damn match. <laughs> and Lily and Lily had one job. You know what Lily had to do? Lily just had to cost Charlotte the match. That's all she had to do. And you know what? Lily failed me. Good thing she died. Good thing she died because she failed me tonight. Damn. But you should have known Charlotte was not going to lose that title. We no. don't know who she's losing it to. But, no, because my thing is, they're trying to get her to 16 times to tie her dad before she goes to AEW. So they're going to make her lose, pick it up, make her lose, pick it That would be so stupid. The WWE does. I like I it. 
You like the match? I thought it was entertaining. <laughs> oh, I thought this was the best Alexa Bliss match we've seen in two years. Oh, 100%. I love the new gear. Oh, very Harley Quinn-esque. I wish her hair was red again, because that was like, that would really bring in the character. But yo, sh- I, people are like, get rid of this character and everything. I'm like, but it's like. They're going to kill her off now. Now that Lily's dead, she's going to go back to the goddess tomorrow. No, but I don't want that. Because that's, oh, I love this character. I don't, I don't get why people hate it. I actually like it. I think it's actually the most entertaining she's been. They can let her be a good wrestler and be creepy. And it's just, it, I don't want the goddess character. I feel like it's so replayed now with like, you have Mandy Rose still being the golden goddess still in NXT. No, she's not. She has brown hair now. Yeah, but she's still calling herself that. But I, I, I think Alexa Bliss has moved from that character, in my opinion. I think she could evolve to a different character, but like I don't, I don't think she could be the Golden Goddess anymore. I mean, the problem is, and I talked about this on Tuesday. When you get rid of the person whose character she has, it's very difficult to continue the character. Because you can also make the argument, and Amanda brought this up on the BCP, are they really going to do Fiend versus Fiend, Fiend in AEW versus Fiend WWE, who could do it better? True. They're not going to do that, because AEW's going to blow it out of the water, and WWE's going to, AEW's going to do it 10 times better. So you knew, so assuming now that Bray is debuting Wednesday in Rochester to fix the Dark Order, that's why they had to do that. Yeah. They had to get her away from that. The match was good, but you run to the same problem. Who's facing Sh- Raw has no woman on their roster right now. Who's going to verse her? Oscar's hurt. Nia's going for surgery. Shayna looks like Shayna needs to build momentum more before she can get that championship. There's no one left on Raw. No. Natty and Tamina are technically on SmackDown. Yeah. And the other two women on Raw are your women's tag team champions. Like, who, like, who can even, who do you think can even beat her that has such star power? Like, I can't even think of anyone in NXT right now besides, like, and, okay, Raquel might lose and might go up. She's going to lose to Frankie on Tuesday? I think she might lose. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to pull her, I think they're going to call her up. Or Dakota. That was the other person in my head. I don't think they're going to do that. Well, you have to remember, too, there's a bunch of people who haven't debuted. Dakota hasn't debuted. Aaliyah hasn't debuted. Mia Yim hasn't debuted. Tony, they can move to Raw. Yeah. I... These are things that need to happen. Yeah. I'm giving you free ideas. <laughs> Please hire me. <laughs> it's just ridiculous at this point. Like, like, I hate that, like, we're all, yeah, women are, like, the women division's amazing, you know, like it's been going so well. They gave us the evolution pay per view. Ronda Rousey left, and you're like, oh, screw, screw the woman. When Bill publishes my article about how the women's division is going backwards, I'm literally going to be like, here, here, everyone. No, it but makes me sad. It's, it's ridiculous because you're cutting matches. Mm-hmm. The matches are so short. I think the women's match on SmackDown was two minutes. Yep. Someone said it's two minutes long. It's sad. And now you're running the same problem. You have no one. And it's the same thing with who is going to be Bobby. You are not building a mid Carter to face Bobby. You're not building any star on Raw. Mm-hmm. And you could technically make the same argument on SmackDown. You're not really building a baby face to beat Roman. Nope. Because if you sit here right now, I could say to him, blue in the face, yeah, Rollins is going to do it. How is Rollins going to do it? But then you make the argument, oh, it doesn't make sense for Rollins to do it. Why are you holding off so long for this match? Yeah. You, you've you, held off a year to have this match with Rollins and Roman. What are you waiting for? They sprinkled it, and they're like, oh, no, wait. Brock said he can come back. Let's forget about that. We're going to continue this edge thing until we figure out when Seth's going to fit in. Like, it's just, just work, <laughs> you know? Like, there are people who want to be used. There are people who people want like us fans want to be used just do it it makes me so mad <laughs> this is why either of you is like because they use everyone even if it's just dark or evolution they use they everyone. bring in and rob and i were having this conversation for elevation you know who they brought in to face thunder or the dark order local indie talent from new york yep 
and just for the experience. Like Thunder, I forgot the girl's name that Thunder wrestled, but that will always be the first match on Grand Slam. That indie star will always have that to her record. She might have lost. She's the first match on that historic card. Yep. That was the same thing when I went to um Jersey for the first Jersey show. Thunder Rosa versus uh, Mid Carter. And they were the first ones out there. That's the difference. I know. And that's why watching WWE makes me so mad. Even me trying to get my friends into it. Like I have to laugh with them because it is like just ridiculous at this point. I think Bill put it best, and then we'll get into the rest of the card. Bill texts me, and he goes, I turned the pay-per-view on for two seconds. It reminded me of watching SmackDown. I then turned off the pay-per-view because I thought I was watching SmackDown. Why have a pay-per-view that's about extreme rules and have one stipulation? You could have made the... the um, you could have made the tag team match. Been tonight. Yeah, you could have made the tag team match a tables match. But made a Simple. tornado tag. Simple. You could have made Becky versus ba- uh, Bianca yeah. have a stipulation. Triple threat match could have been, well, well, technically, if they want to be technical, triple threat, no DQ. Yeah, it's very. But they didn't use it to their advantage. <laughs> no. Oh, please. <sighs> but the, tri- the see, the triple threat for the US title, I actually thought this match was good. And this was my sleeper. I knew that this match was going to be good. Um, I actually expected Jeff to get the pin. I was shocked that he didn't, that they pro- and that they protected him. And I don't know if maybe that's going to lead to something because, you know, Damian and Jeff are kind of celebrating in the ring. Yeah. And I know that Jeff's contract ends at the end of 2022. Thank God. So I don't know if maybe they're going to do something with that. That's, that was my thought. I was like, oh, Jeff's just in here to eat the pin. He's not going to do anything. Like, And then yeah. when the crowd was... So- when the crowd was cheering for him when he was going against Damien, going like, yeah, and they were booing Damien, I was like, this might itch some uh, brains back there. Give Jeff a title. At least. Give Jeff a nice title run. Give him a nice feud. Because this man deserves so much in life. He's gotten his shit together. Like, he's there to, like, like to entertain us, and he does. He has his old theme song back, thank God. Like, just let this man entertain us. Like, I honestly thought he was going to win tonight at one point. Wow, that's I wanted cool. him to win at one point. I mean, you had to remember, two weeks ago, he was chasing after a 24-7 title. So yeah. any momentum we can get from Jeff Hardy is good. But then I also feel like you can make the argument, oh, Cross and Priest, give Cross a title. Give Cross a better look in his character, then we'll talk about getting the title, WWE. See, what I think they should do, if they were smart, they need to put Cross on one brand, and they need to put Keith Lee on another. One, one of them needs to hold the U.S. title. The other one needs to hold the IC title. And just let them go. Mm-hmm. Let them go. Let them go till Mania. Yep. And then boom. We because need- then there's your match for Survivor Series. Yeah. It would be iconic. And we just need Scarlet. I, 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 I think Scarlet just brings the character of Karen Cross so much better. Adam I, Cole did not lie in his promo, guys. They do all this stuff to make Cross feel special. You know what they do to make Adam Cole feel special? They ring the freaking bell. You know how loud that boom was on Wednesday? <laughs> was- so he was like, because that, that was for Rampage, right? Yeah. He was. He said something about Cross. I, I wasn't able to watch Rampage. No! But I remember when they were wrestling for the NXT title before Cole left. They had this whole promo. And Cole was like, you know, they do a million things to make Cross feel special. They give you the lights. They give you the girl. You got the cool music. You know what they do to make Adam Cole feel special? They ring the freaking bell. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. They, didn't do, they didn't do anything on Rampage. I was really confused. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> No, 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 no. But you know, they just the mid card also. I feel like the mid card, like, st- like I love Damian Priest. I think he deserves his championship. Everyone loves him. Like he's over. And Vince, right now, for right now, is very highly on him. But it's just they need to work on it. Too. They need to work on a lot. <laughs> bring me and Bill in. If you bring me and Bill in, 
we'd have a good time. So let's talk about how the man dressed like her man's with that all white gear. You cannot tell me that you did not think of this 2015 SummerSlam look. I cannot be the only one. It was Black Widow. No way. It was very much. Did you watch Black Widow? No. Full on white outfit. You know, Black Widow has the red hair. Very Black Widow-esque. I was like, oh my God, (laughs) Rollins. There's no way I'm the only one who thought that. Like, please, somebody. Read it out. I want to see. I want to see the votes. I'm just like, what did Becky look like? Black Widow or Seth Rollins? I want that vote. This match was fun. This match was until the end. This match was fun because I knew that these two could really just bring it because they're two very talented women. I think Becky does not get the credit she deserves for only having a baby less than a year ago. And she's made it as if she was wrestling for a whole year. She looks no step. No reverse. She looks better than she did at WrestleMania 35. 100%. That was their life. (laughs) 100%. Not too many people could do that. And I know that she did an interview, I think, either yesterday or a couple days ago, where she was, like, crediting Seth. Like, oh, like, Seth really motivated me. And Seth really helped me, like, get back in shape. Like, yes, you go, Kang. You you show them. Well, she she looks amazing. I know. Like, like, let me just... (laughs) Just for a second. Before the ending, did you like the match? Yes. I liked that they kept using Bianca's hair. I was waiting for Bianca to whip her. I don't think that's ever going to happen again with yeah. Sasha, but I was waiting for that moment. But Becky, I guess I never lost a step. Maybe sometimes when it was just a little slow, but other than that, I was just like, she went away for a year? And like, I love how Pat's like, there's no, um, uh, you still got it, Chance. And I was like, because she never lost it. She's only gone for like a year, a little bit over. Um, she literally doesn't even look like she was gone for a year. 16 months. Yeah. So it wasn't like she was gone for five years, you know? She, it was like she never left. It's insane. It's, but crazy. the ending, so the ending um, conflicts me a little bit because and you kind of figured that she that Sasha was going to come out. She tweeted it, actually. She said, tonight, dot, dot, dot. Oh, I missed that. I saw that before the show, and I was like, oh, she always does this. Like, before All Out, she tweeted the, about the final countdown. <laughs> like, how am I going to take her so seriously? So, I think it makes sense. I think now you're going to head in this direction of the triple threat. But I think my only cons about this is, one, you definitely could have waited till the end of the match to do this and give Becky a clean win. And st- and then you could have kind of you could have put Bianca still in the storyline. Yes. Like, oh, I was having this great match and Sasha stole the spotlight, just like she always does. Yes. That's how you could have fit her in. And I guess and the second thing too is just you could have had your teasing four horsewomen. Yes. They're all heels right now. They are. Well, <clears throat> first of all. Who, like, I, like, the problem is Becky is not a heel mm. and not a face. She's just an ass. She's <laughs> like, not she's, a tweener. She's a heel. I they want her to be a heel. I know they want her to be a heel, but even before that, she was just, like, her. You know what I mean? Like, and the problem is, who's the heel when it's the triple threat? Can they both be? Yeah. Yeah? I don't know. It was just it was just because really remember, weird. technically at WrestleMania 35, Ronda and Charlotte were both the heels against Becky. True. True. My logic brain just didn't want to work for a second. <laughs> I apologize for that. Oh, um, it's fine. I yelled at Bill because Bill was like, There's no stipulations on this card. I'm like, Yes, there is the main events and extreme rules match. He's like, since when? I'm like two weeks ago. He goes, Oh, well, I'll shut up now. Sorry, Kimmy. <laughs> and I was like, No, that's not what I meant. <laughs> but yeah no i i definitely think when bailey comes back from her like recovering from her knee they definitely should at least do the triple the uh yeah. four way at a big pay-per-view i think it's yeah. been a long time coming before any of them leave you know and you don't need to put a title on it like no. i'm not saying do it for titles like no, they will oh yeah someone's gonna win all both belts but She's charlotte yeah but I definitely think that when Bailey comes back, they're definitely gonna. I hopefully imagine all four of them on SmackDown. I mean, Bailey's my pick right now to win the Royal Rumble, but dude, 
she's gonna get so cheered and then she's like all oh, you sheep are annoying <laughs> no because if you think about it if you think about it right her recovery time is up in january yeah oh 100 percent. it makes sense it makes a hundred percent sense yeah I'm literally thinking about January. I have problems. I mean, it's only three months away. I know, but I shouldn't have a oh. right now. Um, we always look to the future. Rollins for the months. Um, please. I get a Saudi Arabia for my birth month pay per view. I'm gonna cry. They got rid of Hell in a Cell for threat. that. You're I think gonna- I got rid of Hell in a Cell for that. You're gonna get your triple threat. You're gonna get Edge and Rollins. I don't watch Saudi. I don't give. I don't give in to that pay per view. <laughs> there is no such thing as a terrible win. There is only winning. Becky Lynch. I mean, is she wrong? No. Exactly. <laughs> what did you think about Sasha coming out? For some reason, I expected it, but I didn't. Like, I didn't expect it to happen for the DQ, which is everything every every time there's a match she did cue but like i'm pretty happy i like her one i like her um one piece like it was actually pretty nice i was like oh she's changing up her style i hope not but i I, i'm excited i hope the draft doesn't ruin this it shouldn't imagine we get a triple threat that night and then they move bianca to raw again can you like Um, it could happen no just saying just saying don't fool me with a bad time <laughs> you never know with the draft because honestly i don't think anyone knows what's gonna happen in the draft i know that becky and south are gonna end up on the blueprint well yeah <laughs> every couple is gonna end up together like wherever keith lee ends up mia yim's gonna end up well technically Corey and carmella are separated because Corey's on raw and carmella's on smackdown right now very different <laughs> He's there once a week. She's traveling. Talk about our only stipulation. Matchup. The demon. Versus the tribal chief. You say triangle chief? I said tribal chief. I was trying to grip my teeth because I don't want to talk about this ending of a paper. I don't want to talk about the end. It was so good. We'll, we'll talk about the match. We won't talk about the botch. Well, I don't even know if it was a botch. We'll talk about the match. The match is good. I like ta- I don't like Statue of Liberty, Finn. I don't know why he was the Statue of Liberty. We weren't in New York. We were in Columbus. All right. That was my first thing. Then when he had the red thing tied around his trunks, I really thought he was wrestling in that. And I go, oh my God, they just ruined the demon. <laughs> me that, that that he's always worn that you know no, he did he, not he, oh he used to add that to nxt i remember clearly because i remember that i've seen him wrestle live as a demon no he did not yeah, it's he in pay-per-views i'm telling you and nxt when he was like the jack the ripper he used to have that little thing i remember this clearly okay. uh i like <laughs> wow it's Kyle. <laughs> wow. Okay. I think I have to speak to this Kyle. This is Mr. Kyle. Mr. has the same name as my brother. Like <laughs> I'm dead. I'm sending Kyle. that clip. You have ruined Kimmy. I'm sending that clip. I'm dead. I'm dead. I like I like the kendo sticks. I like the demon painted kendo stick. I thought that was really creative. Yeah, was really, I loved that. I liked um how Roman wore a mask in the crowd. Yeah, oh, that was. I looked down for a second. I looked up and he was wearing it, and I was like, oh, "So smart of him!" Because he probably still wanted to do that, mm-hmm. but because of his leukemia, he was yeah. like, "He's at high risk." And if, if Roman can wear a mask while wrestling and panting y'all can wear a mask anytime and I, I don't know what the restrictions are in columbus i know that at grand slam you had to show your vaccination like proof vaccination with You're your id new york i think yeah. only new york does that yeah so i don't know if you had to vaccinate for columbus so um i think it was smart by him you know yeah. especially because you never know 
And like, I, you saw him picking up the mask, like between the match as well. Like when he was out there, like you don't know like who touched one no. and whatever. So that was good safety precaution by him. Like you go around him. We love it. We love adjusting to COVID era. I think the Uso spot made sense. Yes. I did not like my PTSD with the red light. <laughs> and why did they add the music? <laughs> Because they were trying to, so how Commodore was explaining it, they were trying to show that the demon resurrected. So it was like his heartbeat and he was coming, he was becoming oh, into Yeah, but why the music? Because he was the demon the entire time. It was very highly produced and high key made no sense. I was like, <laughs> I was like, Vince. Dude, dude, it looked like he was a fish out of water when he was doing the... I was like, are you having, are you okay? Are you a fish out of water? Are you having a seizure there? Are you okay, sir? Mr. Devitt. <laughs> like, like it was, I, like the table shot was sick. Mm-hmm. That was sick. But why the red lights? I have PTSD from the red lights. It, it, same. I could, and then if you know, you know. And the fog, like you were choking out people and blinding people at the same time trying to watch this match. I don't, mm, because to me, I don't, because the red light just ruined a lot of things, because then that's why I thought the botch, because I originally thought when he was standing on top rope, he couldn't see. Yeah. And I said that, I'm like, Finn can't see, that's why he's wobbling around, because the smoke is in his eyes, and it's red, so you're, so the peripheral vision, he can't see, and then the rope broke, and I was like. Which seems like it was part of it, because even the commentary was like, it seemed very storyline-esque and not like, oh my God, is he hurt? But then he was like, he was holding his leg and I was like- Oh, I thought his knee popped out for a I second. Like, the way he hold it, he was holding yeah. it, and it popped out, but he was fine. <laughs> I was like, what is happening? And then he hit the spear and he won. I was yeah, very confused. And then there was no ending, no answer to it. Like, like why did I wait to SmackDown for an answer? Like Brock didn't come um they're like or or i feel like it would have made sense like oh the usos cut the top rope Mm -hmm. oh paul had scissors or paul grabbed the scissors and paul cut the rope the problem is it was all around the ring the top rope fell i know like cutting it was no way it could be cut because it was through the turn uh turnbuckles that's why I think it's a botch. I think it was a botch, and they just aud- they had an audible ending. Like, cause even even Ro- Rom- Roman yeah. flat out like said what happened. what happened. He, oh. I think they we called it audible. We could have had another like another situation. Like, not I don't think dead, but like he could have seriously injured himself. I think. I think they call it notable. I think he was supposed to hit the coup de gras, miss, get up, and spear. I think that's exactly what's supposed to happen. I, I yeah. Because the red lights, why, why keep it? Because even Seth it's said, because even Seth said in the hell in the match, he couldn't see yeah. with the red light. Him and Bray could not see throughout that entire match. So why keep the red? Especially yeah. when you have a guy on the top rope. Rollins and Bray don't go to the top rope that much. So they're so it's fine for them. You know Finn's a high flyer. That has been his style for 15 million years. I think after the, the table shot, should have cut should have just had regular lights up. Exactly. Because he was resurrected, you know? He's back. And the smoke was the smoke kept coming out through the entire night. Every time you lifted the, the apron, the smoke just smoke. kept coming out. The smoke was on the steps. Yeah. Like, if you're going to highly produce something, make it good. Mm-hmm. You're just asking. saying. You, you somehow have money. <laughs> you're asking for a lot there. So, no. a, a, a girl can hope. A girl, a woman can dream. Hey, at least uh, Lily's dead. That good. Huh. On a scale of one being the worst pay per year of 2021. And 10 being better than Grand Slam and All Out combined. Where do you rate this paper? <laughs> do I have to rate it? Yes, this is how we end every uh, show. I know. I would say like a five. A five? It's generous. <laughs> I'm always generous, apparently, or I'm not generous enough. No, I mean, 
I think some of the matches were good. I think storyline wise, it showed how much AEW is better than WWE right now, and, and why people are turning into that product, and why the past two weeks uh, Raw is lost in the demo. Yeah, I'm a rated a four. Yeah, I just I my problem is I wasn't I totally forgot it was happening tonight, so it kind of went a little bit over my expectations of the match yeah. of the pay per view. So it was just like one of those situations. That's why I was like five, you know, half. <laughs> well, next up we have Crown Jewel. I had to see if I can. When is that? It's the twenty first at one. I'm gonna have to see if I'm working or not. I'll be in class for the first hour. I uh, I because if I'm working, I have no access to my phone. Oh, you all get to see me. Hmm, maybe, maybe I'll get another. Hmm, maybe I'll, hmm, maybe I'll work some magic. Maybe we'll put, maybe we'll get Mike on here. Get to yell at Mike. Well, well, I'll be October 9th at Atlantic City. Um, Promote it. For GCW, Moxley versus Nick Gage versus Matt Cadona now. So, I think Tiff's going to be there. Actually, I think Tiff's going. Tiff? Yeah, Tiff. the other person on this network. Oh. Like me and Kyle. I think Tiff's going. Well, if anyone sees me, say hi. Don't be creepy, but say hi. <laughs> All right, so I'll let you give your shameless promo first because I have a, a lot. A, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's good. I'm proud of you. I always say. Um, so follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Skylar couple under dashes nicole you can follow me you can find me through timmy um i'll be working with d3 with d3, d3 damage 365 <laughs> kevin's gonna kill me damage 365 i'm um, gonna be in baltimore um 15th and 16th um so if you they come by the table say hi to our crew and then I'll be in, if probably see you guys before November, hopefully. But in November, I'll be part of the big event on the 14th? No, the 13th. 13th. And I'll be upstate Albany um, during Legends of Showcase mm-hmm. 5. Um, also, on, the, on Sunday. So I actually have stuff going on, guys. It's not just me promoting my socials. Actually, wait. That's six. Five is the one October twenty third. You're on oh, Legends oh, the one with- six. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Five is Moxley. October twenty third. Yeah, I know. I know. I want to go so bad. I like how I know this, and I'm not even. I'm not working that one. I'm not working that one either. Apparently, unless you ask me last minute, I keep saying birthday gift, but it never happens. Sorry. So. Huh. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not my fault. I don't, well, I do work for Kevin, but I don't work for Kevin. No, I know. You're good. Mm. You're good. <laughs> so I'd like to thank Skylar for coming on to review show with me and not making me look like a loner and making it like I have friends. You always have friends. So you could, of course, find me here at the No Hold Bar Network. Um, you could follow me on Twitter at Kimmy underscore Sokol. My last name is right over there. It's S O K O L. Um, we're all, I'm almost at 500 followers, guys. So you should you should follow me. I think I'm at 495. Yeah. This morning. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Kimmy Talk Wrestling, and of course, the Instagram for No Hold Bar Network. There's a lot you could see here. You could, of course, see me with Kimmy Talk Wrestling. I am your WWE content queen. I am. Yes, I, you suffer with me for WWE, guys. You suffer with me. <laughs> um, I review Raw, NXT, SmackDown. I'll give my AEW Dynamite and Rampage reviews. But you could also turn to the All Elite podcast with my two best friends, Tiff and Kyle. They cover everything in the AEW world. BTE, Dynamite, a Rampage, Elevation, Dark Elevation, and any other content that AEW throws our way. They are airing this Wednesday after Dynamite around 10.30, so make sure to tune in to them live, participate in the live chat, and talking about Tiff. You could also tune into her indie talk. She's interviewing a lot of independent wrestlers, and No Holds Front Network has so much fun stuff coming in October. I cannot wait till October 1st for Tiff to announce what is happening in October. But, um, Kyle, like I told you, I don't like what you did to me in that ad, but that's whatever. So, um, there's the No Holds Bar Network shameless promo, but um, I also write for the thepopbreak.com. I wrote about the controversial dark side of the ring two weeks ago. I covered the whole Ring of Honor Women's Tournament uh, from before the tournament even started, 
for the tournament was a thing till the very end. Um, I wrote about the friend review. You could also see a couple other things I wrote up there. So check that out. Um, we review a bunch of stuff, not just wrestling. We review TV shows, music, now that music's back in person and concerts and yay, and video games and anime and all that fun stuff. So make sure to check out thepopbreak.com. You can also see me on the Bob Culture Podcast. Um, I'm on there at least once a month yelling at either Kyle or Mike about my predictions. So, and I've taken over the past two predictions as the host. So make sure to check those out too at the Bob Culture Podcast on YouTube and Facebook and Twitch. And I think I'm going to be interviewing some indie stars with Rob coming up soon. So that's also really fun. But um, I got to talk about Legends of the Ring, which is this Saturday. Oh my God. I, I didn't think we'd make it to Saturday. Cool. Okay. So Saturday, 8.30, October 2nd in New Jersey. Go to Legends of the Ring com because i don't know the exact thing but lana the varsity blondes malachi black buddy matthews the beautiful people extreme expose i'm only naming a couple but there's over 70 guests this is our biggest convention yet if you cannot go in person you can see me working every single virtual signing starting friday at three o'clock where i'm working with marina schaffer matt hardy and cj perry also known as lana yeah, that's right. I did that thing. So make sure to check this out Friday night at East Coast Autograph Auctions. And then, of course, Saturday, either come to the convention or there's a lot of other virtuals. So check those out, too. God, everything is on LegendsOfTheRing.com. Tickets stop selling, I think, sometime this week. So make sure you get your tickets. And I'll also be in Baltimore. I'll also be at Slugfest with Skylar. I'm not working for the same promoter, but with us, you can see Maria Canellas, my my bestie um mike bennett christy hemi or WWE hall of famer lita i will also be at the big event um i cannot say who our guests are yet but there's big ones and it is full gear weekend and if you are in the queens area the day after full gear it is aew day literally kenny omega is going to be there there are so many more guests to be announced but kenny is the headliner if you want to meet kenny omega please go to big event but the day before full gear aj lee is making a rare appearance make sure if you want to meet aj check her out because this is rare this doesn't happen um, there's also a bunch of other guests that are going to be there. Make sure to check out thebigevent.com for all of that information. It's in November. And I'm also going to be at WrestleCade. I'm going to be in North Carolina. I'm really excited. Um, I'm going to be with Deanna Peraza. So we're going to have a fun time. We're going to have a fun weekend. And I think that's it. Sounds that's about it. it. That, that sounds about right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, so I'm this week, I'm going to have a draft video. Um, top five people I want to see move Ron SmackDown. Something like that. Got to plan it. I'll plan at some point during class because that's just what I do. I plan most of my creative work in class. It's really funny. I'm like, Kyle, look! <laughs> so make sure you tune in. But from Kimmy and Skyler, um, we will see you for the next pay-per-view and I will see you all tomorrow when we review Monday Night Horrible Raw. Woo! Out. Stop. There we go. No.